Hello everyone, it's me, Guillotine. Welcome back to the channel. I've got game two for you between myself and Suak Ja. If you haven't seen game one, I suggest you go back and watch it. A lot of what happens really sets the stage for what's going to happen here in game two. In the game one video, I also go over the rules of how the Korean League works here in Clash of Legions, but I did forget to mention one rule. The card Hellgate is completely banned from League play. If you don't know what Hellgate is, don't worry, I've got some content planned to cover it in the future, and if you do know what Hellgate is, then you can probably figure out why it's banned. By now, you probably realize that I won game one, largely due to having a surplus of resources. Suak Jot gets to choose the map for game two, and smartly chooses Guardian's Hideout, a two-player map with very few resources. I'll have to be very efficient with my trades to get a win here. Down at the bottom left, we have Suak Jot in the blue, and myself at the top right in the red. For this match, I'm opening with what I call the Korean Quick 2 Barracks. It was taught to me by number one mechanic, who is ranked the number one player in the world. Shout out to Meg. The build order is instant barracks, worker, barracks, worker, worker, worker. Now I'm setting rally points at both entrances to his base. Right here, I take down his worker before he can grab any intel. I'm going for a modified hound rush. It's similar to a Russian dog rush, but with a built-in security blanket. After producing my first eight hounds, I'm going to go ahead and put down my first gas. That way I'll have a chance to recover if things go north and he's able to hold. Which he defends this perfectly, keeping those spearmen back behind the tower, and now he's got an iron pants out. There's just no way I'm going to get an easy win out of this. So I pull off and reposition my troops just north of his base. And since I already had that gas going, I can now start adding some sneaky boys into the mix. He's sending up an owl and sees that I've got three barracks and I don't even have a second gas. He definitely knows something's coming, but it's already too late. These added sneak bombers really allow me to do some damage. I was able to take down eight workers, but he still has all of his units. I may not be able to expand all over the map like a madman, but I can put a hold on your money. Knowing his base is well defended, I go ahead and put down my expansion. With there only being two additional places to expand, I know that I need to stay ahead in economy. Even though there's no resources there, it's common for players to try and occupy the center of the map. Here, you can see that we actually both try to make a move at the exact same time. We send some workers down to play some towers, but what I didn't notice was that he had an owl sitting there watching the center. Once he spots me moving in, he calls back his workers and realizes that this is his opportunity to change the tide. This is probably the best map for you if you like to have tanks in your deck. I try to send some bats across the map to see if I'm up against any tanks, but Suakja is already on his way to disrupt my attempts at securing the center of the map. Notice how awful my micro skills are on this bat bomb. And this right here is why tanks are so good on this map. I try to quickly clean it up with my bats, but he's already got way too many cryo mages, and I'm not going to be able to keep up with gas production to contest it. Luckily, while this fight was happening, I was able to sneak into the top left corner of the map to start another base. This is important because Suak Ja just sits below my expansion and continues to hammer away with that tank. If I hadn't gotten out early, he would just continue to kill workers until I ran out of gold. Right here I get a little frustrated, and I just send everything I've got to try to break this up. Clearly it didn't work, and that economic advantage that I did have is quickly dwindling. Unknowingly ahead in the base count 3 to 1, it starts to feel like Suak Ja is going to run away with this one, as he continues to bully me from that center position. So basically, I feel like it's Hail Mary time, that the only way that I can get a win is if I create another economic disadvantage for my opponent. The plan is to sneak my troops out of my base into the left side of the map, then run through and kill all of Suak Ja's workers. As I'm running up the ramp, I run into a tank and a cryo mage, but luckily I'm able to get a quick surround, force a cancel on this expansion, and attack his natural. Some good connects there with the lightning and blizzard spells, but I'm still able to get in and do some damage on those workers. And most importantly, he had to take all of his forces out from the center of the map to come home and defend his one and only base. My natural had already been mined out, so I take advantage of that and move my workers down to the bottom right to see if there's anything there. Thinking that I'm hidden, I try to get away with putting down a quick tower. It is obviously a failure. My supply is pretty low, but I want to suck his forces out of that position, so I just send everything I've got back down to the bottom left, knowing that that's the only base he's got. Knowing this gold line is untouched, I try to sneak another worker in over here and put down a tower, but they quickly sniff it out. 
that's okay though, because I still accomplished what I set out to do. While all this is happening, I send some workers down to the bottom right and I start setting up camp there. Even though my economy is way ahead of his right now, one bad exchange on a map this small can really snowball in the opposite direction. So I really want to lock down this bottom right before trying to push him. Believe it or not, Suak Ja right now still has the army to win this. But to my surprise, he attacks my natural. A philosophy that I like to stick to is to always attack the new investment. Destroying a mined out base and a couple of barracks isn't really going to do you much in this scenario. Seeing this mistake, I decide to sink all of my resources into bats, rush in, and get the win. GG. As you can see, I end up winning this best of three, two to zero. And next week, I'll be moving on up to the double A group. Suak Ja, Kam Sabnira. Thank you, Suak Ja. Good game, my friend. If you're liking this Clash of Legions content, please continue to like, subscribe,